Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can save textiles in Affinity Publisher for iPad application-wide so they're always available. Again, I'm in the iPad version of the app, but I've created a desktop version of this tutorial as well, and it's linked below. Let's talk about the problem that we're solving for. So you probably know that textiles let you quickly apply a set of attributes to text, whether it's at the character or paragraph level, and it allows for consistency throughout your document. They're a huge time saver. The problem is they only save at the document level, not at the application level. So anytime you create a new document like I've done here, you're given a new set of default textiles. Now I could update and save these, but again, it's only going to save within the document itself. There's also a way to import styles from a previously created document, but there's an even easier way and that's using the assets panel. To find your text styles, go to your text panel. I do want to note my screen is flipped for a left-handed person. If you ever can't find an icon, just tap and hold on the question mark at the bottom. So under the text panel and this carrot here at the top, you'll see text style. Now, whenever I open a new document, my first step is to typically get rid of these defaults. This step is entirely optional. I just prefer to work with a clean slate and pull in my text group. So I'm going to go to the burger menu here at the top and choose delete unused styles. And now you can see I'm left with a no style style. If I go to my assets panel, you can see I've set up a category here with a few subcategories under it. And I have two text style sets here. One is a font duo, just made up of two fonts. And the other, which is the one I'm going to pull in here, is a font trio called Butterfly Wildflower. And this is from Creative Fabrica. I linked it below. So I've just taken a few text frames and I've applied that font trio to those text frames and save them as styles. If I go to the text styles panel here, you can see that even though I deleted all the unused ones, this is here. Now I don't actually have to keep this group here. I can delete that. And those are going to remain in my text styles until again, I go up to the top and choose delete unused styles. But now I can apply this to whatever I want. So I'm going to go back to my assets and pull in this lorem ipsum text. I think that's a little bit bigger. I'll just click in here and in my text panel, I'm just going to click on maybe monthly grid. And I could click in here and choose maybe the large header script. Now, obviously that's too big, but I can go right in to edit that script and just change that to say something like 24. Now it's updated the textiles here in the panel, but it hasn't updated the textiles that are in the assets I pulled in. This works like any other asset. Whenever you pull an asset in, it creates a copy. Whatever changes you make to that copy are only to that, not the original asset. So that's untouched. Now this lorem ipsum text is great, but let's look at how you can use it for a real case scenario. In my templates, I have a base calendar that I've created that is a year at a glance for 2025 and 2026. And if I go to my textiles, you can see I have no textiles applied to this. So I've saved it as, as a template so that I can pull in a fresh copy whenever I want, make any changes, and it's not going to impact the template. But more importantly, I'm starting fresh. I can pull in one of the textile groups that I've created and just start updating it. You can also see that in my groups, I have this broken out by components so that I can easily select all of them and automatically apply a textile to it. So I'm going to go back here to my assets and pull in that butterfly wildflower again. And you can see it's here in my textiles. I don't need to keep that group in here. I just needed to pull it in long enough to get it to pull into the panel. And now I can just start updating this. So I'll select the year and I'm going to choose same name and that's automatically going to select both year layers. In my panel, I'm going to choose large header and I want to center this up. So I'm going to go backwards real quick and I'll update that style. Now I might change the size of this, but I'm going to place the rest of them. So I'll go back to my layers and choose a month. And in my textiles, I want to add a script font to this, but the only script font I have is for the large header and it's going to be way too large, but I don't have to start from scratch. I can just go to the burger menu and choose duplicate. I'm going to change large to medium and click on font and change this to 24 and then click OK. Now I can select same name. So I have all of my months selected. I'll click on medium header script. Again, I want to center this up. So I'll just go back 
and I'm going to tap to update that. So now whenever I apply it, it's automatically going to apply it centered. I'll go back to my layers and I'm just going to finish this up. So I'll choose days of the week. So I'm just going to do select same name, days of the week, monthly grid, same name, and then finally monthly grid. And I can step back and take a look at this and see if there's anything I want to change. The only thing I'm going to change right now is my large header, because again, I can make any changes to these textiles without impacting anything else. I'm just going to go in and hit edit. I'll change the size of this to say 36, and it's automatically going to change it for anything that textile is applied to. So in under five minutes, I was able to create an entirely new calendar with textiles applied using a base calendar that I created as a template and then pulling in some textiles that I saved as assets. All right, so you've seen how to apply it, but how do you create those? And back in my original document, I removed that lorem ipsum text and I've removed any unused styles. Again, I just wanna start fresh. And in my assets, I have a set of text frames that I've created. Whenever I'm creating these textile groups, I'm typically doing it for a digital planner, calendar, notebook, things like that. And that's why I've named them the way that I have. If you're going to use this for something else, obviously name yours however works best for you. I'm just gonna move this into the middle here. What I want to do is first, I'm going to ungroup these. These are just a set of six text frames. And I want to apply text styles to each of these and save this as a group again so that I can pull it in in future documents and it's automatically going to pull in their text styles. So I'll go to my text panel and there's two ways that I can approach this. The first is I can deselect any text and in the text styles panel, I'll hit plus. Now, if you've watched the desktop version of this, you saw that I created a group style first. I don't like how that works in the iPad version. It doesn't actually really create sort of a folder or a hierarchy that you can see in the text panel. So I don't bother with a group here in the iPad version. I just go right into creating the styles themselves. And I create all of my styles as paragraph styles because I find them to be more versatile, but you can create either a character style or a paragraph. So I'm going to create paragraph style. And I want to name this large header. I don't need to base it on anything, but I want to change the font. So I'll go to font family and I'm going to use this Lola Serif. This is a font trio that again, that I downloaded from Creative Fabrica and I'll link below. I want to change the size of this to 48 and I'll click okay. And then the next important step is I need to apply it to the text frame. So I'm going to select the text frame and hit that. I also want to center it up. I'll click on the update here and that's all set. So I could move on to the next one. The other way that I can do this is to immediately select the text frame and in the main text panel, I can click here where it says no style and choose new. I'll name this large header script. And I'm going to apply the actual changes to the text and then save it as a style. So I have the font name, or I'm sorry, I have it named. Let me just choose the font. I'm going to choose this Lola script. And again, I want this to be 48. You can see my text frame isn't quite fitting. I'll fix that in a moment. I'll go back to my text styles. I just wanna make sure this is centered and it is. I'll go ahead and click on this paragraph icon here, and that's automatically going to add that text style here. I'm just gonna drag out my text frame, and I can do either op option. I can either add it here, or I can add it directly to the text. I'm going to keep doing that all the way down, and I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so I have created all six of my text styles and I've applied it to all of the text frames. Again, it's really important that you make sure that you apply them to each of the text frames if you used this method to create them because this is what you're going to save to the assets. So I'll go to my layers panel and I'm going to select all of those layers. 
So I'm just clicking and then two finger tapping. I'm going to group this and I want to name this group. Whatever I name the group is how it's going to be saved to my assets. So I'll go into the three dots here into the layer options and I'm going to name this Lola font trio. I'll go to my assets under the subcategory for font trios. Since I'm working with three different fonts here, I'll just choose add asset from selection. I'm going to delete that. I'll go to my text styles. I'm going to delete unused styles and let's just pull that in and make sure that's working okay. And you can see it's automatically pulled in all of those styles, which means that anything I pull into this document can have these text styles applied to it. If I want to export the assets here, I can go up to the top and choose export category. And I can then bring it into the desktop version if I want. If you have any questions about what I've covered here, or you have a suggestion for a tutorial, let me know in the description below. I'd love to hear it. If you like my teaching style and would like to check out my full length classes, you can find them on both Skillshare as well as my own site, The Creator Collage. Again, both are linked below. I have lots more tutorials coming to my YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might wanna check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.